One of the most amazing parts of any GNU slash Linux operating system is the shell, and in particular, the bash shell. It's GNU bash. It is the standard shell on pretty much every Linux system. And the reason it's the standard shell is because it's really fantastic. It's fantastic as an interactive shell, but where it really shines is as its own scripting language because bash has a scripting component to it where you can actually write your own custom scripts. You can think of it as your own custom program if you will, and you can create programs that do pretty much anything you can imagine on your computer. So today what I want to do is I want to quickly cover some very basic concepts when it comes to bash scripting. We're going to create a few little simple example shell scripts here and follow along with me. If you're new to bash scripting, seriously, follow along with everything I do on this video today and you will be amazed at how far you come in a short amount of time with bash scripting. So the very first thing we need to do before starting our scripting is to open a terminal because we need the bash shell and obviously to get to the shell, you need to open the terminal. Now what shell is running in your terminal? On most Linux systems, it's going to be bash as your default user shell, but not always. Some Linux distros have ZSH as the default shell. A few of them have fish as the default user shell. If you're unsure what your default user shell is, you could do an echo dollar sign shell all cap and this should tell you what your users, in my case, my user is DT, the DT user, his default shell is actually slash bin slash fish on my system. So I'm actually in the fish shell by default. So I'm going to go ahead and switch over to bash. So I'm just going to type bash in the terminal. The next thing I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to go ahead and create a directory for all of these example bash scripts that I create today. So I'm going to do a make dir, so make dir, make directory, and I'm going to call this directory bash dash examples. And now that I've made that directory, let's go ahead and CD into that directory. So CD space and start typing bash and then just tab complete and it should fill out the rest of the path to bash dash examples. If I do an LS, there are no files in this directory. Of course, it's an empty directory. We haven't created anything just yet. So I think if you've never done a bash script before, the very first bash script you should create, because this is pretty much the very first thing you do in every language that you learn, you should create a basic hello world program. So let's go ahead and I'm going to open this with Vim. I'm going to do hello.sh. Now you don't have to use Vim as your text editor if you want to. You could do nano if you prefer a nano as your text editor or you use Emacs. You could use Emacs if you want a GUI text editor, something like Gedit or Kate or Genie or whatever it is you want to use. It doesn't really matter the text editor, but since I'm already in the terminal, I'm going to use Vim because Vim is a terminal program. So let's go ahead and create this file, hello.sh. The very first line of any script needs to be the shebang. The shebang is the first line and it tells the computer what language this script should be run as. So, you know, is it Bash? Is it Python? Is it Lua? You know, what is the programming language we're using or the scripting language? So it should be pound symbol exclamation point. Uh, some people call it crunch bang, right? Crunch bang. You remember the old crunch bang distro? That was their logo was the hash symbol exclamation crunch bang slash user slash bin slash env space bash. So this obviously is the location to where bash is on the system. So this should always be the very first line of your script. Now for a basic hello world program, let's start with assigning a variable. Let's create a variable, typically a variable is some variable name. You can create any name you want equals, and then you assign it some value. So in this example, let's do string equals, and the string is going to be hello world exclamation point. And then next we want to do something with that variable that we just assigned a value to. So why don't we simply echo and then inside double quotes, do dollar sign string echo string where string is actually going to be substituted with the value hello world. Now let me write that and let me go ahead and quit out of that script and then let's run the script. Before we run the script though we have to make that script executable because by default hello.sh we have not made it executable yet. So what you have to do chmod change mod change permissions essentially and do chmod space plus x for turn on the executable flag for hello.sh. 
And now that we've done that, if I do it ls again, you can see now we have the executable flag turned on, meaning we can actually run this as a program. So let's run it as a program. To run a script, you need to do dot slash and then hello.sh in this case. If I do that, you can see what happens. Well, it outputs hello world. And essentially, most bash scripts are going to be simple little scripts like this, where essentially all you're doing is you're telling the script to run a shell command of some kind. For example, echo is one of the standard like GNU core util commands. If I wanted to, I could go ahead and have this execute some other standard GNU core util commands like pwd, print the working directory. Also, go ahead and run the cal program, the calendar program. Let's go ahead and write and quit out of that. Once again, I will run hello.sh and now I get hello world and then pwd print the working directory so the path to the directory we're in and then it ran the calendar program so that's essentially what scripts are typically are used for it's you know when you have a a problem to solve or you have a a series of programs or commands that you want to run in a particular order you use bash scripting to kind of automate that process now that we've done the simple hello world program let's do something a little bit more exciting something a little bit more I, I would say intermediate level. So let's use a while loop because while loops are very interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and create a file. I'm going to call it while-example.sh. You always end bash scripts or any shell script as .sh just so it's obvious that it's a shell script. And now that I've created that, what does the first line need to be? Remember, it needs to be the shebang. So I'm going to go ahead and copy the shebang here into our script. And now let's go ahead and once again, let's create a variable and assign it a value. This time let's use numbers. I'm going to call the variable X and I'm going to say X equals one. Now earlier when I created a variable, you know, it was a string, right? And it was string equals, and then I had to wrap it in quotes. But since I'm assigning this variable as a number, I don't have to wrap it in quotes. Numbers do not get wrapped in quotes. So I can simply do X equals one. And now let's do something with it. And let's do a while loop. So a while loop is while some condition is met, then do some command. And then it will just keep looping over that until finally we're done. So let's create a while loop using X. So let's say while and inside brackets. So you need an opening and closing brackets and then dollar sign X for the variable while X and we'll say dash LE is less than or equal to five. So while X is less than or equal to five, do some command and let's just simply have it echo this is the number and then dollar sign x and then all of that needs to be wrapped in double quotes because again it's a string right and so these are going to be actual uh, words that are printed to the screen as output so can you see what we're we're starting to do here while x is less than or equal to five it's going to print out this is the number one, this is the number two, this is the number three, except X is always going to equal one because we assigned it to the value of one. So we actually have to increment X in some way. So what we're going to do is inside this do part of the while loop, we also need to go ahead and reassign X a different value. So X starts at one, but each time the while loop runs, we need to go ahead and increase X in some way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and do X equals uh, dollar sign x plus one. So let's go ahead and you can see I had to wrap that in parentheses and I also included a dollar sign at the beginning. That's important. Now this dollar sign here is optional. Uh, the script runs just fine with or without the uh, dollar sign in front of this x. So what's going to happen is when I run this, we're going to have x equals one and then the loop starts. So the very first thing it's going to do is echo. This is the number one and then it's going to take X and the old value of X is one plus one is going to be the new value of X. So now X is going to actually equal two and then it's going to keep looping. So now X is actually going to be equal to two, which is still less than or equal to five. So then it's going to print out a new line. This is the number two and then two gets incremented. Now it becomes three and we keep running through the loop that finally X is going to be a number that is not less than or equal to five. So once we run it through the sixth time, then it's actually going to kill the loop. It'll stop the while loop because the condition is no longer met. 
I hope that makes sense. Let's go ahead and write and quit out of that. Once again, I will chmod plus x to make our while example script executable. And now dot slash and then while dash example dot sh to run the script. And you can see the while loop works as expected. So we get this is the number one, two, three, four, five. And then on the sixth time, of course, it doesn't meet that condition anymore. And the while loop ceases to run. Now, before moving on, I do want to briefly go back into the while example script because there is something we need to talk about with number comparisons because you saw me use dash le. Dash le was less than or equal to, but there are other numeric comparisons you could do. You could do dash lt for less than, dash le for less than or equal to, dash uh, gt for greater than, dash ge for greater than or equal to, dash eq for equal, and finally dash ne for not equal. So you've got all of those available for use. So let's go ahead and quit out of that and let's move on to the next example script because now that we talked about a while loop, now we should actually talk about the if statement. So let's go ahead and vim and I'm going to create a new file if-example.sh. So this will be a if statement. Once again, let's go ahead and add the shebang for the top line and then what I'm going to do is, first of all, I should explain what an if statement is. is if and then once again some condition so we'll give it some kind of parameter that has to be met and then if this condition then run some command else so if the condition is not met you know do some other <laughs> command and then finally fi to end the if statement so if begins with if and then finally to close the if statement fi so if in reverse one other thing you could do with the if statement you could also use something like elif so this is essentially else if so else if and then give it a different condition and then you know run again uh, a different command some other command right so if this condition is met run this command else if another condition that we give it is met then do this other command else you know if all else fails then just do this command is essentially how if statements work so let's actually do an if statement so so let me go ahead and delete everything I've already written. And since we've already learned about uh, numeric comparisons, less than, greater than, less than or equals, etc., let's go ahead and do something similar with this if statement. So I'm going to do if, then I'm going to wrap this in double quotes because it's going to be a variable, and I'm going to do uh, dollar sign one in this case. I'm going to say if it's dash gt, if it's greater than 100, uh, then do something. If I can type correctly. Now you're probably asking, well, hey, you didn't assign any variable called one, so what is dollar sign one? Well, that's actually a, a shell variable that is already set for you. What that stands for is it's user input. So when I run this shell script, I'm gonna run name of script space and then give it some input. And my input, if it's a number, it's going to check if that number I gave it is greater than 100 or not. So if it's greater than 100, I want it to do something. So I'm going to tell it to run the command echo. Let's go ahead and echo. Well, that's a big number. Else, else means if what I give it is not greater than 100, then I want you to do some other command. In this case, I'm going to tell it to echo. Small numbers don't impress me much. And then finally fi to close the if statement. So let me go ahead and write and quit out of that. Once again chmod plus x and if dash example dot sh and now let me dot slash if dash example dot sh and let's run this example script. And you can see uh, it, it errors out because it expected me to give it some input because that was part of the if statement, the dollar sign one, it expects me to give it a number. So let's actually give it a number. I'm gonna give it 1000. 1000 is greater than 100. Remember the if statement was checking if the number is greater than 100 or not. So let's run that and you can see, wow, that's a big number. But what if I give it the number 10, which is not greater than 100? Small numbers don't impress me much. So that's a very basic example 
of an if statement. And of course, you could do a lot more with an if statement. And like this is a very simple kind of if statement, but you could run more than one command. For example, if the condition is met, I don't have to just echo, well, that's a big number. Maybe I also wanted to go ahead and print the working directory. And in the else part, maybe I don't want it just to echo. Small numbers don't impress me much. Maybe I also want it to run the date command. Let's go ahead and go ahead and try this out. So once again, I'm going to give it 1000. And now I get, well, that's a big number. Plus I get the working directory printed out. And if I up arrow and once again do 10 for the number, now I get small numbers don't impress me much. Plus I get the date command run as well. So now that we've shown what a basic while loop looks like and what a basic if statement looks like, let's actually combine the two. Let's actually present the user with a menu of choices and then based on what you pick from that menu of choices, you know, the script will do something. So let's go ahead and create, well, I'll do choice.sh will be the name of this script. Now let me go ahead and start with the shebang and then I'm going to create a variable. I'm going to call the variable choice and I'm going to assign choice the value of four. So it's going to be a number. Next, I want the script to present us a list of choices. So print out some text to the screen. So we'll use echo for this. So I'll have it echo one. So I'll give uh, the very first line, the number one, and then some choice, you know, the very first choice in the menu. Let's do shells because I have three different shells installed on my system. I have bash, fish, and ZSH all installed on my system. So maybe I'm choosing between different shells that are installed on my system. So the very first one will be echo one, bash, echo two, fish, and then echo three, ZSH, and then finally, we need to tell the user to pick one of these. So I will echo dash in for don't add a new line after this line because I want you to actually input to the end of this line I'm about to write. And I'm going to say, please choose a shell. And then I'll make it obvious that you need to pick one, two, three. Then I'll do a colon and then a space. And then finally, the ending double quotes here. So this line will not receive a new line break right after it because what I want to happen is the user, when they enter one, two, or three, it, their one, two, or three will appear at the end of this line. I hope that makes sense. So now I'm going to create a while loop. So I'm going to say while, and then inside the brackets, inside a double quotes, I'm going to do dollar sign choice. So while the choice variable dash EQ equals four, and semicolon do something. And what I want the while loop to do is I want it to read choice. So read is going to basically read whatever user input is given. So the user is going to answer this question here. Whatever they type is going to be choice. And remember, by default, we assign choice to be four. But the user is going to give one, two, or three as a value, you know, picking a shell. So what this means is choice is always going to be four unless the user picks one, two, or three. So the while loop will always run until the user finally chooses a shell. And when they choose a shell, we'll do something with that information. Now the while loop will end in done, but in between while and done, while the while loop is running inside the while loop, let's actually add an if statement. So I'm going to indent over a few spaces. I'll indent over four spaces and let's create an if statement. So I'm just going to go ahead and create the beginning of this if statement. I'm going to say if choice equals one. So they chose one here or they typed the number one to our question here. If choice equals one because we're reading for choice. If they type one, then what do I want you to do? I want you to run the command echo. You have chosen bash for your shell. And that's really all we need to do there. But I could do an elif and I could do the same thing. This time checking to see if dollar sign choice equals two. Then I could have it echo out. You have chosen fish as your shell. And that's, let's actually align these so it looks a little better. And then naturally, I need to do another else if. So elif choice equals three, then echo, you have chosen ZSH for your shell. And then finally, we need some base statement because what if they didn't choose one, two, or three? What if they typed something other than one, two, or three? Well, we need a catch-all. And the catch-all is else. 
else then just echo error and then you must choose and then one two or three now the problem here is we need to make sure that if they don't pick one two or three that choice always equals four otherwise the while loop will quit and we don't want the while loop to quit until they are forced to pick one two or three they have to pick one two or three so in this else part you know this last catch-all we need to make sure that choice equals four so if they don't pick one two or three that for example they type in the number five well whether you type in the number five or not we're going to make sure well we're going to assign choice to equal four that way the while loop keeps going and then what i want to do is once again ask them this question here echo and then please choose a shell so i'm just going to copy that and i'm going to paste it down here let's indent over a little bit essentially i'm going to force them to choose one two or three i'm not going to let them choose anything else anything else they choose it's just going to make the while loop keep running until you finally give me a one a two or a three so let me write and quit out of that and let's actually chmod this so chmod plus x choice.sh and let's actually see if this runs as expected i'm not sure if this actually is going to go as expected and it actually did not because it says there was a syntax error uh, near done in choice.sh and this is the beauty of you know doing this kind of stuff on camera is sometimes i like making errors on camera that way we get to investigate the problem and immediately I spot the problem. And if you were following along earlier in the video, you probably spotted the problem. How is an if statement constructed? Well, it's a if, else, and then how do you end the if statement? Well, remember fi, if in reverse. I forgot to add that to the if statement. So now let's write and quit. And once again, let's run the choice.sh script. And now it prints out those echo statements, one bash, two fish, three ZSH, please choose a shell, one, two, three. And now if I enter one, you have chosen bash and then the script stops. Now I could make the script do something else after that, but you know, right now that's all we wanted that script to do. Now let's run it again. And this time I'll choose two. You have chosen fish for your shell. Let me up arrow and once again, run the script. This time choose three. You have chosen ZSH for your shell. And then once again, let's up arrow and let me give it something that's not a one, two, or three. For example, a five. And it says, error, you must choose one, two, or three, exclamation point. Please choose a shell, one, two, or three. Six, error, you must choose one, two, or three. Okay, finally, I'll choose three. You have chosen ZSH for your shell. Now this, of course, is just a quick example script, but if I wanted to do something with these choices other than just echoing, hey, you chose bash, I mean, you chose bash from the list. Well, what if instead of just printing out, hey, you chose bash, I also want you to go ahead and change my default user shell to bash. Well, there is a command on your system, the change shell command. So it needs to be run with sudo privileges. You could have it do sudo chsh for change shell. And then inside double quotes, dollar sign, user, all caps. User is the user that you're currently logged into the terminal and running commands as in my case my username is dt so it's going to do sudo change shell dt dash s and then the path to the shell that will now be my user's default shell in this case it would change my default shell which is currently set to fish it would change it to bash if i choose one in this script now i could copy that and i could do the same thing down here where when i choose two for fish it would change my default shell to slash bin slash fish and then finally i could do the same thing down here where if i choose zsh it would change the default user shell for my dt user to slash bin slash zsh now I don't want to actually do this you know start messing around with my default user shell so I'm actually going to comment these lines out but if you wanted a simple script that automated that change default shell for a user kind of process you know this was very simple to do with the use of a very simple while loop in conjunction with a very simple if statement let me write and quit out of that so there you have it a very gentle introduction into the world of bash scripting you learned a little bit you learned how to assign some variables you learned how to compare numbers to see if a, a number is less than or greater than or equal to a, a different number you learned how to do a simple while loop you learned how to do an if statement you learned how to read user input 
through a script and you know this stuff was very easy to do i know a lot of people imagine that bash scripting is something difficult it's going to take a long time to master if you followed along with me on this video already you're probably realizing hey this stuff really isn't hard at all now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Methos, Erion, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Solastri, Tenran, More Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie. These guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. Without these guys, this quick little introduction into the wonderful world of bash scripting wouldn't have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now, these are all my supporters over on Patreon. I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux, free and open source software, and bash scripting, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.